Good evening. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to talk, as, as Jim said, I'm going to talk on uh, on magnetic exploration uh, or, or how we, we, we plan to proceed, hopefully, with, with, with uh, magnetic exploration on Mars. As Jim said, that, that there's substantial technical challenges that are quite different to doing it on Earth. So th this has been a really busy period for Mars. In the last two weeks, uh, two uh, satellites have been put into orbit successfully one by the Chinese and one by the United Arab Emirates. And on Fridays is the big event. Friday, uh, Perseverance rover touches down, gets its wheels dirty on, on Martian soil. This is a, an artist's rendition and, uh, uh, from NASA of, of how they hope it will go. Uh, I, I suspect it'll be streamed live somewhere uh, just before nine o'clock local oh, time. Oh, sorry. Okay. The, now, now, so, so the the the, um, the Gisero crater, which is the landing site, has been chosen because it's believed to be an old lake bed. The, the, the whole purpose, or most of the purpose for perseverance, is to search for possible evidence of previous life on Mars. So they, they've gone to what they believe is an old lake bed. It has a drilling capability. Uh, the rover is, is, is due to drill into what are believed to be lake deposits. It has an onboard laboratory, and it will be testing material to look for evidence of, of previous life, Mi micro microbial uh, light stromatolites. Um, so, so it can do it can do some tests in, in situ. Then it will extract the core, leave it on the surface for, for some later um, program to, to pick it up. Together with perseverance. It'll be carrying uh, Ingenuity, which, which is a little, little robot uh, helicopter, um, which they're hoping will fly. The, the, um, the, the, the surface atmospheric pressure on Mars is only about 1% of, of the pressure on Earth. So th there's not much atmosphere to, to be lifting yourself up with. Um, it, it doesn't have a payload. It's simply there to see if it can work. And, and rather than flying, it's likely to be a set of of hovering hops, but but hopefully it, it'll be a process to move around the surface. And if you did put magnetometers into it, to be able to move that magnetometer from point to point. So what, what do we know about the the uh, so so in this talk, I, I will look quickly at some of the aspects of Mars magnetic field. We, we'll look at some magnetic field modeling back here on Earth in the tenter field. Uh, we'll look at the issues of TMI and vector component data, and we'll apply lessons learned, learned from Tenterville study to see how we can adapt those for work in Mars. So what, what do we know about the Mars magnetic field already? Most of what we know comes from the Mars Global Surveyor, which, which, uh, which was orbiting from 1996 to 2006, mostly at elevations of almost 400 kilometers. So we're not seeing much detail. Um, there was a period that they do have some closer data down to 110 kilometers to, to try and conserve fuel as they came in. Um, th th they actually air braked, so they tried to use the, the top of the atmosphere to, to slow them down rather than taking all that fuel to do it. Um, and that meant that they came down a little bit lower. So there is some low, lower data down to 110 kilometers. Um, and it found anomalies, substantial anomalies that are due to remnant magnetization in the crust. Mars does not have an acting dynamo at the moment, so it doesn't have a, a global um, uh, or a planetary uh, magnetic field, but it has quite substantial anomalies due to remnant magnetization, much stronger measured at, at, at that elevation than, than any anomalies due to remnants on the Earth. So, so you know, we're not sure exactly what it's due to. Um, and and we, could, we can use the, the software. Uh, so if you take model vision, you, you, you can uh, work out, for instance, uh, the magnet magnetization direction of these anomalies using the software developed for, for mineral exploration on Earth. The, um, most of the anomalies are in the south. So, so Mars is generally broken up and the top third is pretty flat and it's low, it's a low elevation. There's not much going on with the magnetics in, in, in the top third. Most of what's going on is, is in the bottom two thirds, uh, which, is, which is substantially higher. It's believed to have a thicker crust. Um, and, and it's got much more relief on it. And, and, and that's where the big anomalies are. The, um, the next advance in, in, in mapping the field is MAVEN, Mars Atmospheric and Volatile Evolution Program, which is 
it, it, it arrived in 2014 and it's and it's it's still there, still working, and it's going to have a big task now to to um, to be involved in the communications for the Perseverance rover system. Um, now this is slightly lower elevation, so we can see a bit more detail. Um, but the focus has been on mapping the that the, the magnetic field changes, what we call diurnal variation, uh, on Mars due to current flow through through the atmosphere, which is uh, as the solar wind comes in and ionizes uh, the gases in what atmosphere there is. Many of them bleed off in, into space. Um, there's a, a substantial uh, so, that, so I don't change anything wrong. To, the pointer is, is a top one, isn't it? Uh, okay, I won't try it. The, 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 the image uh, uh, with, with the, the blue and uh, blue and red lines are our current flows through, through the um, uh, through effectively the ionosphere of, of, of Mars, and it's quite different. You can see the day side and, and the night side are quite different. And, and, and there's quite different uh, diurnal variation through the day and night there, but it's, it's continually active. The, um, the other picture at the bottom is, is a very uh, dynamic uh, artist's impression of a solar storm on Mars. And, and this is a real danger. You, know, you, don't, you don't want to be on Mars when there's a solar storm. It's got a very weak magnetic field, so there's a little deflection of, of the solar wind, very little atmosphere to absorb anything. Uh, it's, so it's highly dangerous. and, and, and it, that's one of the main uh, objectives of, of studying um, how it's losing its atmosphere. And, and it, it, it may be that, that these large um, th these large magnetic anomalies due, due to remnants may have a part in, in controlling the, those dynamic atmospheric current flows. If there is a solar storm on Mars, you, you, you'd be much better off in Tenterfield. <laughs> and then on the, uh, in the scenic rim, <laughs> uh, which, which is up on the border between New South Wales and Queensland. Um, if there's a magnetic storm here, you probably wouldn't know, and, unless you're out there running a magnetic survey. Um, the, 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 sorry, the survey area map is, 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 is just, just down here. The, so, so this survey was flown by, by, uh, by, by the Mines Department in, uh, in, in 2012. East-West flight lines, 250 metres line spacing, a nominal clearance of 60 metres, but there's lots of terrain there, so, so they, they weren't off of the 60 metres. Um, we're going to look at two areas. We're looking, so we're going to look up towards the border in, in, in those uh, strong anomalies in, uh, near the top of the survey area. We'll look at an area in the west and an area in the east. So. This is this is the western area. It falls in the Warwick uh, quarter million geology sheet, and it, it's over a set of volcanics. You can see the terrain in here. I think those are 100 meter um, uh, elevation contours on that, so it, it is quite rugged ground. Series of spurs and, and valleys in between, and what we're looking at are the the, the, the Lamington volcanics, which are subalkaline basalt, minor tuff, and uh, okay. agglomerate rhyolite. And, 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 and th those are the, the flat line uh, units on top. We, we'll look at in a minute also at the eastern area, which is a separate sheet, but, but the, same, the same stratigraphic terms, fortunately, the Lamington Volcanics, the Blue Knob Basalt, the, the Nimbin Rhyolite, and the Lismore Basalt. Again, flat line and a bit more, a bit more stratigraphy on the side. The magnetics. Th this image. This image, the colouring here is from TMI, and the contours are from the DEM. If you look at that quickly, you, you, you would think that the contours and the image are <laughs> the same thing. They're not. But clearly, clearly, the, 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 the terrain is dominating the magnetic field expression. Um, if you're up on the ridges, on the spurs, you're in a high field. You go down into the valleys in between, you're in a low field. Um, so the, the, and this is because that terrain is magnetic. The, the, the set of volcanics is strongly magnetic and, and, um, and, and the field is higher on the top than, than on the bottom. Now we, we can, if, if we take a, a little section of, of the terrain, so that's a terrain image on, on top, on, on, on the left. Uh, this, all, all the work, all the modeling work I'll show here was, 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 uh, was done in model vision, which is was done here in Sydney by um, 
at Dave Pratt and uh, Blair McKenzie, tell me why. Um, the, th that image on the top is, is made into the three-dimensional um, terrain image sh shown beneath it. So that's a faceted uh, general polyhedron that, that, that's, that's generated from the terrain on top and, and, and just given a flat bottom. So you just need to choose an elevation of the bottom that, that matches roughly the base of the volcanics. And by a series of inversions, we've got a whole bunch, we've got about 30 to 40 flight lines in, 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 that, uh, in that little map area. This is, this is an extractive um, flight line. The, the measured field is in black, the, the assumed uh, regional field uh, in, in purple, and the, um, the, the model computed field in red. Um, the, the fit is, this fit is actually a good fit. It doesn't look so fit. If, if you wanted to match a single profile, you could do it better than this. But this, this is coming out, this is one of 30 to 40 cross, cross, cross sections that are being simultaneously fitted. So, so the fit is not optimum on, on any one of them, but, it's, but you can see all of the features are there and you can match them as well. If you look in, 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 the, uh, in the terrain at the bottom, the valley in between the two, the, the two bodies or the two parts of the body, is, is the mag low, and as we've seen, it is, it's the highs all above the topographic highs. So this inversion, we've got all of the spatial de details of the model <laughs> from the terrain model already. The only thing that we need is the magnetization direction. So here's the, the top image is, is the measured TMI of this area. The bottom image is the, is the computed TMI from our inversion. And you can see that that, that, that fit is, 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 is a good fit. And there's no fudging that, you know, that, that the spatial details of that model come directly from the terrain model. So I've, I've not adjusted it any, I've not shifted it, I've not taken bits off or added bits on. The only change is in the magnetization. So the geometric field in this, in this, in this site, 59 degrees inclination to the south, of course, uh, 11 degrees declination. The magnetization direction that comes out, just over four amps per meter, so it's fairly strongly magnetized. The inclination minus 54, declination 18, is very close to that. And if you actually say I want to model this with an induced magnetization and just put in this geomantic field direction, you would you'd also get a good fit. But it's not quite the optimal fit. This is the optimal. Right, so let, let's move across now to the, to the east. Oh, sorry, before I do that, uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit later about, um, about vector magnetization. And, and this is a good, a good opportunity to introduce it. What we've done is to take the TMI and, and, and match it but by this inversion of the model. The TMI is a vector. We normally think of it just as a scalar. It's just a measure of the strength of the field. But the field is always consistently directed because we have about a thousand nanoteslas variation on, on these, but we have a background field of about 54,000. So the, the, the vector direction is always in that field and, and, it, and it, won't, it won't move around very much because the anomalies are not big enough to disturb it. So the TMI is actually a vector. And, and, and although we just talk about its strength, it really is a vector. And we can transform, if we have a map and we can do a 2D FFT, it's not very good in this area because it's not nice and flat. You know, the, it's not an ideal surface to do an, an FFT transform, but it's good enough. We can, we can take that, 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 that field that we've, uh, that, that we've matched on TMI and, and look at it in any other vector. So on, on, the, on the left hand side over here, we have the models BX, BY, BZ, that's the three vertical, the, the, the easting, northing, and vertical components of the field. We can forward compute those from the model we've got from the, with, the, with this magnetization. Instead of computing TMI, we just compute a different vector. So we compute the easting component, the northern component, and the, and the vertical component. And we can also derive them by FFT transform of the TMI. And you can see that because we've matched the TMI, we've automatically matched the X, Y, and Z components as well. Now, th that's no big deal here. It's not giving us any new information. The transform doesn't create information, it just changes it. It changes it from one expression. To another, but, but it'll be important when we come to look at Mars. Let's go to the eastern area. Again, you, you can see the terrain and, and the, uh, the DEM contours there of terrain. 
on top of the, the same the same volcanic unit. Um, but when we put the TMI on it, again, th these contours, the, the DM contours, could be TMI contours. You look at that image. But what you might notice is that the high ground now is blue. It's not red anymore, it's blue. Okay, if you're on top of, the, of these hills, the field is lower. And you go to the bottom of the hill, uh, the, of the hill is higher. And the only reason that that can be is because these rocks have a magnetization direction which is opposite to the one we just looked at. So these rocks carry a reverse remnant magnetization. The previous rocks, it's not that you're going to have a, a set of normally uh, of, of reversely magnetized rocks on this side, a set of induced magnetization rocks on the other side. The other rocks probably have as much remnants as, as, as these or very similar amount of remnants. But their remnants is parallel to the field. This remnants is anti-parallel to the field. The difference might only be a few tens of thousands of years. It's because one set of rocks were erupted and cooled in a field which had one polarity. The Earth's field flipped. And we've got a set of rocks now with the opposite polarity. There's no big, otherwise there's no difference. But, but, but except for the magnetization, magnetization is totally different. It's 100, almost 180 degrees different. So here's our, our, again, our terrain model built into 3D, that 3D model used for an inversion against magnetization direction. Again, here's an example. And you can see here that the, the, the gap between the two bodies now, which was a, a mag low before, is a mag high. Beautiful. Here's the TMI measured and TMI computed. The, the, um, we had minus, about minus 50, or 54, I think, or four for the inclination. That's that's flipped over to the negative, uh, negative to positive. The declination was 18, I think. It's gone now to 188, almost 180 degrees. What that's, that that would be an, an anti-parallel magnetization would be that you change the sign of the inclination and change the declination by 180. Magnificent. And if we look at again, if we do the same exercise, we, we take our model for compute. The three components again they match the components we obtain, obtained by the transform FFT transform of the TMI because this transform doesn't depend on magnetization direction. This transform only depends on the TMI direction of, of the field. That, that's, that the magnetization doesn't come into it. So this transform is still valid and still works. Again, it's not a big deal here. We're not, we're not creating anything new, but it will be important in models. So what about TMI and vector component magnetic data then? What, what, what's the big deal? Well, on Earth, the TMI measurements, we have a consistent field direction because we have a strong dipole field from, the, from what's going on in the Earth's core. Um, and and these, these ripples that we're looking at, the anomalies, ripples on that, don't change its direction, except in some very, uh, very unusual conditions. We have extremely strong magnetization. So TMI is, is it's got a consistent field direction. We can treat it as a vector. We can do all our FFT work and, and, and it's, it's, it's great to work with. Previously, we, you know, before TMI, we used to use vector, uh, the, the vertical component of the field. Vector component measurements are dreadful to do on here. The reason is that, it, that they're, uh, they're, they're made with either flux gates or, or, or um, uh, you can do them with squids. And the, the, the sensor has to be oriented. There are a, a, a vector that has an orientation. The sensor has to be oriented. And the, the, you're highly penalized for any error in that orientation. Not because of the anomaly you want to look at, but because of this extra 50 to 60,000 nanotesla. So it's the angular error on that 50 to 60,000 nanotesla that will swamp the signal that you're trying to look at. So that's why we don't work. With, with, with vector component data on Earth. But let's go to Mars. On Mars, TMI measurements do not have a consistent direction. The background field is weak. The only field you're seeing is the anomaly field. And as you go around it, it's direction changing. And I'll, I'll show you some examples in a minute where, where you, you, know, you just cannot 
So you can still use it, you, you, you can still use TMI, but TMI would only be the strength of the field and it would no longer relate to a consistent vector. It is not useful. But if we go to our vector component measurements, we no longer have this huge penalty from, from 50 to 60,000 nanotesters. That's gone. The only, the only angular error we have to consider now is the angular error in trying to measure our signal. And, and you know, that, that's a shame, that's, that's difficult to do, but it's not, it's not a killer. So this 50 to 60,000 nanotesters is at the window, and we can start now to use our vector component measurement. What's the advantage of this? If we have a high resolution survey, we can transform from one component to any other, as I've shown you in, 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 with, with that data from the center field. There's no point. It's just a different expression of the field. It doesn't create any new information. It is, it's just a change. If we have sparse data, we can't use this FFT. The sparse data would either be um, just having a grid of measurements, but the measurement's not close enough to be able to do a reliable FFT, or of having, you know, if, if you're using a rover, for instance, to take the measurements, measurements along a line. You, you, you not, can no longer do that to the FFT. You cannot transform now from one vector to another. If you want another vector, you have to measure it. So the, the FFT is unavailable, but if you measure multiple components and you have sparse data, you have more information than if you measure a single component. Where you have sparse information, sparse data points, if you can get multiple component measurements at those sparse data points, you have more information than if you had only one component, whatever component that was, whether it's DMI, or, or, or any of the uh, any of the direct. So we know that when we go to Mars, we're going to be working with sparse data, and we want to make the most of every every measurement point, and we want it to be multi-component vector data. That's the key. Ideally, it would be it, it would be uh, we go further and then actually require the tensor. Another tool. Let's move to Mars. So th th this is ju just an image of, of terrain from Mars. You can see the difference between uh, this, this projection doesn't preserve area, but you can see that, that, that at the top, washed out, that that's the low, the low northern plains. There's not much going on there uh, in, in terms of topography, not much going on in terms of magnetics. Uh, so, but I've picked a feature. And so if you go from that red box to that one here, I've picked a feature that's about 40 kilometers, or it's about 30 kilometers across the feature itself. I picked it simply because it's equidimensional. I just wanted something convenient. I don't know what it's due to. I don't know if anyone knows what it's due to. Um, but but it, it's about a kilometer high. It's not small, it's not small. Um, but it, it, it's and, and about 30 kilometers across. We can use the same model vision software to, to, to make our three-dimensional model. So here's the model at, at the bottom. It's got vertical exaggeration on, but it goes, shows what we've got. We can compute the field. And we can compute, as we did, tend to feel once we've got a model, if we have a model. So what I've done here, this is the first example of a Martian piece of terrain given a magnetization from center field. I think that's a safe, safe prediction that no one's ever done that before. Um, yeah. Yeah. This, this, is, this is the normal magnetization. You wouldn't actually use the term normal. Uh, normal and normal and reverse is what we're used to, to, to using on, on Earth because we have a dynamo model and we know how it relates to it. On, on Mars, we don't know. So you wouldn't actually use the term normal. You just talk about having either positive or ne negative inclination. This would be negative inclination, which is normal at the center field. So here are the three components. I've blacked out the, or pointed out the, um, the area over the, over the the feature itself, because we don't we don't want our our measurements to have to go up on top of it. So I'm showing you where we could get to if we drove a rover towards it, or if we hopped our um, ingenuity around it. And you can see that if if you if if these uh, if these fields were measurable, and, and, and you know if you had enough signal to noise in, in det detecting these, if you had just two or three points. You can actually invert from magnetization direction from two or three points if, if they're multi component and get the magnetization direction. This is this is with the um, this is with the, the the normal magnetization. If we go to the reverse magnetization, and this hopefully will take me back. Yep, okay. 
Okay, so change of polarity of the magnetization gives you a change of polarity of the magnetic component. So you, you just you just pick half a dozen points around here if, if you can get your, your three component data at half a dozen points around that feature. And if you have enough signal to noise, that, that is the condition. Hopefully your feature will be magnetic and, and it will be on an area that is not, you know, that does not have magnetic material. Once you have a, if, if that's just a, an elevated feature with, with magnetization continuing around it, you're in trouble because the small topographic features that are near your sensor um, will, 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 will be a noise, a noise uh, source. But hopefully if that feature is, is, is isolated by itself and it's magnetic, we've got its magnetization direction. And that's, that's not easy to get any other way on Mars. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be packing a, a, a polymag rock drill to the one test it. Uh, so, so the TMI, here's the TMI. You can still compute the TMI. So the TMI here is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the three components. You don't have to add them. Normally for TMI, you would take each, each uh, anomaly component and add it to the, to the background field component, which is your 50 or 60,000 nanotesla tesla field. Here, you, you, you don't have that. So, so this, you only have the anomaly to include to this body, ideally. If you had TMI data, you wouldn't, you had a clue what the magnetization direction is. You couldn't dif differentiate between those two. So, so you know, what, why have it? It's no longer a vector. And, and this, this really makes the point. Once you've got the easting and northing components of the field, you can work out the declination, the declination of the field from the ratio of the easting and, and northern component. And these are maps of the declination for the two magnetization directions. The red to, the red to blue abrupt change is if, if you go around a compass, you have to at some stage flip your face because you, uh, you, know, you can't keep on, keep on going and add, adding continually. So that red to blue transition is where you, at, at the southern, as you, as you come in from, from uh, from the east toward, uh, sorry, yeah, from the east towards the south, you go up almost to 180, then suddenly you go from 180 to minus 180. So that's that 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 red to blue transition is 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 where your declination is 180 degrees. The, each of the, the these contours are at 90 degrees. The contour in the middle of the green area, which is which, which is your middle value for zero, is the north declination. If you went around this feature with a compass, you'd be all over the place. You couldn't use a compass. That compass just swings all the way around. And it swings around depending on the magnetization direction of the body. And if, if I take the, um, take the images off, you can see. So, so here we have the two magnetization directions. In each case, at any one point, the declination of the field is, is for one magnetization is, is opposite to the declination for the antiparallel magnetization. Now, apart from modeling positive terrain features, you can also model negative terrain features. So here's a crater. There's no end of craters on Mars. So this is a hole. Effectively, if, if this sheet of material, as uh, shown here in, in, with, the, with the green model, if that's magnetized, the crater represents a hole in it, an absence of magnetization. I can create a, a terrain model, to just, to, just as we did at intent to feel. Except here, here we've got the dip you know, for the crater, obviously. Or I can take a plane across the top, rather than going from the bottom up, I can take a plane across the top of the crater and, and take, make a model between that, that plane at the top and, and the, the same ground surface at the bottom. So this, this blue model will go into the hole in the green model to make a complete sheet. I've got two ways to model this. I can give the terrain the magnetization that I think the rock has, or I don't need to worry about the terrain. I can take the hole and give it a magnetization which is opposite to the opposite to, to the magnetization of the rock. I, either way should, should give me the same answer. I can test that. So here the, 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 the strong black line is the edge of the crater. The on the top we have the terrain model, and you can see it's a terrain model because it's got little dimples around. That's because the terrain outside 
goes up and down a little bit. So, so when you have that on the model, just underneath your computation point, I've raised the computations up from the ground level just to avoid any, any um, singularities. <clears throat> so I, made, I raised the, the, the train, the, the measurement point slightly up. But you can see the irregularity of the train model on the top. The model on the bottom has only got the magnetization in the middle of it. Um, but you can see if, if I give this, this whole, the anti parallel magnetization direction, I get the same answer. Um, now, now, what you would actually do here is, is you take that, that black line that represents the top of the crater, you would use that to trim these images just as I trimmed the previous one, because you, you wouldn't, unless you could actually get ingenuity to hover over the top of the crater, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get the measurements inside this black line, but that's enough. You, you still, as long as you get close to the, the edge of the crater, as long as you come up to the edge of the crater, you've still got enough of the magnetic field outside it to work with. So we can, we, we can determine the magnetization direction of, 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 of this particular slab of rock by looking at the, the anomaly due to the hole in it. Now, this, this, is, this, this is my favorite bit of Mars. Um, if, if you were traumatized by, by Hollywood leaving, um, I forget the, the, the actor's name, what Don Cass, no? Um, the, the, the Martian, the Martian who was left behind. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be left behind, not this labyrinth, it's the labyrinth of night. Four kilometers, four kilometers of relief. And this is just the edge of it. I, this is a bit I cut off the corner to make it small enough that I could model it conveniently on my laptop. This is like the Grand Canyon on steroids meets the London Underground. You, you, if you were in there, you'd never get out. <laughs> Fantastic. So we don't know what the, the rock is. We have no the, idea. Um, the, the, there will be speculation about that rock. It, it, it may well be volcanics at the top. What, what, what it is all the way down four kilometers. So, so all, all the way down that vertical section, I, I, I wouldn't be sure. Of course, it's the top rocks that, that will be the most yeah. dominant in terms of its magnetics. But, um, they, they, they're very steep. This, this has actually got a 10 to uh, uh, not 10 to uh, 5 to 1 vertical exaggeration, I think. But they are fault bounded. The exact genesis of this feature is, is, is spec everything you read on Mars is speculation, but there's, there's a lot more speculation than information when it comes to Mars. But, um, and, and it will be some time before we actually re really got our hands on this, but what a place. Again, we, we can either take the terrain or we can take the hole. And, and here, um, so here on the top, I've taken a terrain model. I've clipped out here in white is a clip out of, of, the, of, of the field that you can't measure. But, you know, you would measure this on, on top of the terrain, but I've clipped out the bit that's over the, um, over the hole, over the gravens. You can see features in the, in the, in the terrain across the whole of that area, because it, it isn't a flat terrain, it does have features in it. Um, and of course, there will be lateral variations in magnetization, there'll be all sorts of signal coming in there. But if you went out, if you go out to walk to a scenic spot on the edge of this, and there's plenty of scenic spots, when you get to the edge, so the, the, the bottom set of images are the same three components from the whole model. So the, 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 um, the ones at the bottom, have come from, from this, this, this magenta model. The ones at the top have come from the, the actual um, terrain model. And you can see that, that you can match between them. If you, if you look at the edge of the hole, that's where the, the field is dominated by, by this huge vertical or, or near vertical um, edge. That's where you can see that the, that the models match up. So this, this, um, this, Using the hole that doesn't address what's going on internally within the away from the away from the edge. So you would just use it, but you can see that they match again, just, just as we did with the small crater. And this is really just it's the same thing, it's just at a different scale, just a bit more complex. Thanks for the compute. But it's the same thing. You could you could go to those scenic spots, go to have some of those scenic spots with a three-component magnetometer, enjoy the few, put, put your magnetometer down, take measurements. And you can work out the magnetization if you assume that whole material is homogeneous. 
If it isn't homogeneous, if you get more, more measurements, you map out the inhomogeneities. And if we, again, if we try different, different magnetization directions, this is just to show, again, I've got the two anti-parallel magnetization directions here, just to really make the case that it, it's the magnetization direction that, that's giving us this, uh, this signal. So we can, if we make those three component measurements uh, at a number of spots with the, that we've got the, um, we've got a chance to get the magnetization direction. So inclusions, the, um, what we've learned in, in, in working with, with AirMag data, and in Australia, that, that's our real expertise, um, it, it is hopefully going to be applicable as we come to the stage that the off-Earth exploration starts to get a bit more detail, starts to get down onto the ground or near the ground. Um, so, so I think that we, we, we've got real skills to contribute. To, to any program that is, is in this. Um, but there are new challenges. You know, it's, it's not more of the same. It's, it's not just taking our gear and shipping it up to, to Mars. We have to be prepared to, to adapt. The, um, and, and a big part of that is going to be multiple problems. It's going to be essential. And, and finally, um, if you're going there, then, then, then the debt, the, you can take your compass with you, but, but don't expect it to work the way that it works on the Earth. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for your attention. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So um, we'll take questions. I think maybe one from here, then we'll take down to a people on the computer. Okay, so um, we'll start with Dave. Matt, Matt Damon was the. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I think you're talking. Yeah, yeah. Five, uh, yes, you've just turned the world upside down um, with the presentation, great presentation. Now, you and I have spent probably about the last 20 years trying to work out the magnetization direction so we can get a handle on quantum ratios of property. But on Mars, you'll only have magnetization. What will be its major use? Because it won't actually give you a rock property, which will give you a magnetization direction and amplitude. Uh, well, it, it should tie in, it'll, it'll tie in hopefully to the age of the rocks. Um, we, we believe that those, those, um, those big remnant anomalies that we're seeing on Mars are believed to be due to thermo remnants in, in, in rocks that have cooled while, while Mars had a dynamo fuel. Um, and it, it would be fascinating to know whether that dynamo field flipped the way that the Earth does. So the first thing to do will be to look to see if, if there is, just as we had at Tetafield, normal and reverse magnetization. Do we have that on Mars? And that would be fascinating to know that. I, 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 I'm not aware that it's known yet. Um, It, well, it, it, won't, it, won't, it won't tell you whether the field has flipped, has flipped no, or not. No, it'll so, tell you if there's a uh, core. Uh, oh, we, we're fairly, I, th I think they're fairly sure that that, that, that will be known. I, I can't put that to you, but uh, um, it, it's fairly, you know, I, I think every, most people are in agreement that, that, that it, it has, has had a dynamo. Exactly why the dynamo stopped is, is, is contentious. Some people believe that it was a large impact massive impact and possibly what causes the change, the big change between the southern and northern hemispheres. And there's a huge change, I didn't mention it, there's a huge change also there in crustal thickness. So the northern hemisphere, I think, is, 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 is an average, estimated average crustal thickness of 32 kilometers and 58 in, in the south. So there's a, there's a big change. They, they call that, that that line between it, the, the Martian, like bottom. Um, the mass cause the tectonic. Yeah, it may, may of course all sorts of things. Yeah, uh, but but speculation is the word. Mars Mars is all about speculation. There's there's much more speculation than, than data. But it would tell you, Dave. So it tell you whether you got re reversals or not, and and potentially it could tell you if um, about the tectonics of the rocks. If if there's been folding or halting of the rocks, that 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 would influence the remnant direction. Yeah, well, it's just that 
not being able to estimate the magnetic property of any such character. So timing of events would be an important part of it. And also mapping the the units with maximization pressure. So it's all still top of five That's good. Yes. You could you could you can still you can still use a susceptibility feature on mice. Does the lab include them? Oh, uh, the, the, the perseverance, as, as far as I can see, has very little to do with me. It, it, it's, it's, it's the, the fascination that people have as, as to whether or not bugs lived on a, yeah. on a planet or not. They, they forget the importance of magnetism. So, if it, was a, it would be a, it wouldn't be a self field, though, would it? it would be a more complex field with all of those features that are alternating rising levels. The, or, or the, the main, well, well, at the moment, the Mars, Mars does not have a, you know, it doesn't have a global field. So as, when we talk about the Earth's dark dipole field, that is from what's going on in, 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 in currently in the port. Uh, well, for I mean, Mars, sure. that, that, that's been switched off. And, and, and it, so it doesn't have a global, it doesn't have a planetary field as such. It just has this agglomeration of, 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 of separate remnant magnetizations around it. And, and, and to know those, you know, to know that are they, you know, that they, what directions they have would, would, would be fascinating. And, and just and things, uh, some modeling other. which has like non dipolar fields and you can get uh, more complex variations in the, the field, which yeah. is more like what's in space. Yes. Um, so, can I, can oh, someone sure. asked me to repeat the question? I can't see oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so, we have one from Mark. Um, great oh, talk, Clive. What happens if you have? Alternating reverse and positive magnetizations down the four kilometer Matt Damon gully. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so, so, Mark, so, so, so Mark, is it? Yeah. Okay, so, so Mark had asked what, what happens if, if, if we have a, a layer cake of, of normal and reverse magnetization, which would be beautiful. Um, in, in that case, the, the, the field that you would measure at the top would be considerably weaker. Be, because the, you, you'd have again the summation of fields, and it'd be the summation of fields due, due to opposite polarity maxations, and, and, and there would be a cancellation effect in that. Um, so we'll take one from over here. Um, okay, um, that was a very good technical talk, but given the state of Australia going broke, I wonder whether the CSRO should be concentrating on Mars rather than trying to come up with something that can help our exploration industry so we can actually earn some money. Well, I, 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 what we're doing, uh, Peter, does help. So, so we are working on, on, on magnetometry. We're working on squids. We're working on, 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 on new, new, new developments and, and uses of, of vector component magnetometers. If you look at a different problem, if you look at a new problem, you, 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 will, you will be enriched and, 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 and and, and discover uh, solutions to things that you weren't trying to solve that particular day. So um, th th this this does not represent my major work. I, I must say, um, okay. you, you know, th this is not <laughs> this is not what I spend a lot of time doing. Um, but but um, we we do need to be in in the race for for, for space resources. So so in the long term, it, it, it is beneficial. But I would argue also that, that, it, that it's beneficial um, you know, to, to exploration that we do at present. Um, yeah. exactly, where that, exactly where that feed off pays out to you, I, I can't say, but, but I, you know, I, I can be confident that, that, that some, sometime in the next few years, I'll be doing something. And, and what I learned from this, so I've learned a lot but from this study, uh, it's new to you, it, it, it was new to me as I did it. So um, what, I've, what I've learned in this, I, I can apply, um, you know, if, if someone asked me to go and look at some problem uh, in the Hammersley, um, th this background will, will be beneficial to me. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have one from Bob Musgrave. Do we know or suspect that Mars's field was originally dipolar? Could there have been a significant quadrupolar or higher order field as during our reversal on Earth? Hi, Bob. That, 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 that's a good question. It's a question I can't answer. Um, the, we, yes. should not, we should not start out with the assumption that it has to be a dipolar field. Um, 
the, 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 as I said, there's lots of speculation about Mars, and there have been various um, model candidates proposed, um, but, but really proposed on, on what, I, what, I, what I would say is the present insufficient evidence. So um, I, I would say that the form of the Martian field as it was, um, it is a is a problem that, that that will be solved in the future. Uh, and at the moment, we, if I if I say something, it's just a guess. Yeah. Um, how do you get around Mars? How do you know where you are? Is the first question. And the second question is: If you're on the edge of this four-kilometer gully, then must be in you know, Australia. The Earth thing. There must be enormous winds coming up. One would expect. Any comments? The, the, we know there are winds on, on Mars. We, we can see dust storms. So we, we, we know that, that, that Mars has, has uh, substantial winds at times. Um, and, and some of the craters, if you look in some of the craters, you, you can see really interesting little ripple features in, in, in sand that's been blown into them. Um, whether the wind you know whether you could handle you wouldn't handle it. it would, I think the, I think the atmosphere wouldn't wouldn't be strong enough. But you know, the hang gliders would would, would have a quick. Scary. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, scary. Uh, so, but but so, so you're you're, you're second. Yeah. The first question: is How do you find your way around? Oh, how do you find? Okay, so, so um, I, I'm sure that, that they would set up. You know, there would be an, a GPS type. Uh, there's a few satellites That's up now, nice so, so they would set up oh, GPS. Yeah, but but for, for, for your vector, for your vector um, magnetometers, if you didn't have that, uh, and I, I, I assume that they would have that orientation information on, on the rover, um, uh, but, but if you didn't have that high-tech solution, you, you would just put, you would put a, a vein up on top of it, and because it's always sunny there, as long as you're working the daytime, and, and, and you, would, you would use that as a sun compass. So, so you could use a sun compass, which is a sundial, except you, you, you're feeding time and, and you work out the direction. So, so you, could, you could orient your, your, your the vertical component is, is, is never a problem in orientation, but your easting northern component would be done re relative to, 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 uh, uh, to, to astronomical directions with, with, with the sun, uh, sun shadow direction. Did you just think of that then, Clark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it was good. It was good. So I think it's a master of some kind of It's important, as I said, measuring the free component. You know, it's so important in Mars. That's so important. You can't do too much in Australia. It's important, that, though, coming back to, to Peter's comment, yeah. the, the importance of this comes up if, if you've got four hole data. So a borehole is a case where you have insufficient spatial distribution of your measurement. If you want to target off to something on the side of a borehole, you need multi-component uh, multi information, either the three vector components or the tensor. So, so, so there are, there are, there are um, uh, exploration equivalents to, to, to some of these problems here. Yeah. Okay, so I have one comment and then I have one question and then we'll call it a night. Um, so Phil Schmidt writes, the basalt under my house a few kilometres east of Tenterfield has reverse remanence. My, oh, excellent, my Phil. My cue meter tells me. Great. And then um, Reggie Neroni, I'm sorry for pronunciation. Oh, Regis. Oh, Hi, Regis. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, thanks for the great talk, Clive. Do you think there might be a chance that magnetic field measurements may be dominated by sufficient meteorite impact induced remnants rather than mapping the underlying geology? Um, no, I, 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 I think the, the, there'll be enough, there'll be enough uh, volcanics. The, 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 the size of the anomalies that we see from, from the already that we've, we've seen from this global, global surveyor um, would, would probably, you know, could not be explained, I think, in, in terms of, of, of uh, meteorite material. And it's a material that, that, that the remnants of, of, the, of the meteorite um, must, must, must be on the surface or near surface. 
um, from, from many years of bombardment. So I'm sure there will be a noise, um, much like the problems we have perhaps with, um, with Mag Hemite in Australia, to, to find another example related to, to exploration. Um, uh, you, you, you presumably do, do have um, high magnetization material from iron meteorites at or close to the surface in Mars. So it would be a problem if you if you're surveying on the surface, but it's not a problem with the data that we currently have. Oh no, yeah. four hundred miles away. Yeah, but if you're on the, if you're on the, if you if you've got a rover on the surface, which is the sort of basis of flight sport, then that that noise from the meteorites could be very significant. Yeah, but would they be remnants of magnets? If it's induced, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they would be. Yeah. They would be because they're they're um, like exclusions of nickel. Uh, <laughs> all right so thank you all um in person and online for joining us apologies for a few um technological difficulties <laughs> teething problems um so we'll call it a night now and thank Thanks you all a lot. Thank you.